Good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of ICICI Bank. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sandeep Bakshi, Managing Director and CEO at ICICI Bank. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening to all of you and welcome to the ICICI Bank earnings call to discuss the results for Q4 of financial year 2022. Joining us today on this call are Vishaka, Anup, Sandeep Batra, Rakesh and Anandya. We hope that you are safe and in good health. In January, we saw a sharp rise in the number of COVID-19 cases that resulted in a moderation in the pace of economic activity. However, the impact of this third wave of the pandemic was mild. And with the decline in the number of new COVID-19 cases, economic activity gained momentum in the months of February and March. This was visible in the bank's ultra-frequency index, comprising several high-frequency indicators tracked by our economic research group, which rose from 112 in January to 114.9 in February and 124.4 in March. Some of the major factors leading to improvement in this index were increase in power demand, rail freight revenues, e-way bill generation, and GST collections. We extend our gratitude to the medical and health workers fraternity for their tireless efforts in this fight against COVID-19. At ICICA Bank, we aim to grow the core operating profit within the guardrails of compliance and risk through our 360-degree customer-centric approach and focus on opportunities across client and segment ecosystems. We focus on growing our loan portfolio in a granular manner with a focus on risk and rewards with return of capital and containment of provisions below a defined percentage of core operating profit being a key imperative. We follow a micro-market-based approach to create an efficient distribution and resource allocation strategy by using analytics to identify opportunities. We aim to steadily grow our business within our strategic framework and strengthen our franchise, delivery, and servicing capabilities, backed by a range of digital initiatives. Coming to the quarterly performance against this framework, growth in core operating profit in a risk-calibrated manner through the focused pursuit of target market segments. The core operating profit increased by 18.7% year-on-year to 101.64 billion rupees in this quarter and 22.3% year-on-year to 383.47 billion rupees in financial year 2022. Excluding dividend income from subsidiaries and associates, core operating profit grew by 21% year-on-year in Q4 of 2022. The profit after tax grew by 59.4% year-on-year to 70.19 billion rupees in this quarter. For the fiscal year 2022, the profit after tax increased by 44.1% year-on-year to 233.39 billion rupees. The board has recommended a dividend of 5 rupees per share of financial year to, for financial year 2022, subject to requisite approvals. Further enhancing our strong deposit franchise. Total deposits grew by 14.2% year-on-year at March 31, 2022. During the quarter, average, account, uh, average current account deposits increased by 23.6% year-on-year and average savings accounts deposits by 22.7% year-on-year. The liquidity coverage ratio for the quarter was about 130%, reflecting continued surplus liquidity. Our cost of deposits continues to be amongst the lowest in the system. Growing our loan portfolio in a granular manner with a focus on risk and reward. The retail loan portfolio, excluding rural loans, grew by 19.7% year-on-year, and 6% sequentially at March 31, 2022. Disbursements across various retail products increased in Q4 of 2022 compared to the previous quarter. 
the the business banking portfolio grew by 43.2 percent year on year and 10.2 percent sequentially at March 31, 2022. The SME portfolio grew by 33.6 percent year on year and 11.3 percent sequentially. The growth in our SME and business banking portfolios has been driven by our digital offerings and platforms like InstaBiz and Merchant Stack. The domestic corporate portfolio grew by 9% year on year and was flat sequentially at March 31, 2022. The domestic loan portfolio grew by 17.5% year on year and 5.7% sequentially. The overall loan portfolio grew by 17.1% year on year and 5.5% sequentially at March 31, 2022. Leveraging digital across the business. Our various digital platforms such as iMobile Pay, internet banking platforms, InstaBiz, and Trade Online provide end-to-end -end seamless digital journeys, personalized solutions, and value-added features to customers and enable more data-driven cross-sell and upsell. In line with the philosophy of open architecture of our digital plat platforms, recently we made our InstaBiz Interoperable, that is all the benefits of the app are now available to all merchants, including those who do not have current accounts with us. This initiative enables merchants to instantly create digital collection, collection solutions like UPI ID and QR code and start collecting money from their customers. We have shared some details on our technology and digital offerings in slides 18 to 32 of the investor presentation. Protecting the balance sheet from potential risks. Net NPA is declined by 24.2% year on year and 5.2% sequentially to 69.61 billion rupees at March 31, 2022, from 73.44 billion rupees at December 31, 2021. The net NPA ratio declined to 0.76% at March 31, 2022, from 0.85% at December 31, 2021. During the quarter, there were net deletions from gross NPAs of 4.89 billion rupees, excluding write-offs and sales. The provision coverage ratio on the NPAs was 79.2% at March 31, 2022. The total provisions during this quarter were 10.69 billion rupees or 10.5% of core operating profit and 0.53% of average advances. This includes contingency provision of 10.25 billion made on a prudent basis. The bank holds contingency provisions of 74.5 billion rupees or 0.9% of total loans as of March 31, 2022. Maintaining a strong capital base. The capital position of the bank continued to be strong with the CET1 ratio of 17.6% at March 31, 2022 after reckoning the impact of the proposed dividend. The tier, one ratio, uh, the tier one ratio was 18.35% and the total capital adequacy ratio was 19.16% at March 31, 2022. Further, the market value of the bank's investments in listed entities of the group is about 840 billion rupees. As has been announced, Vishaka has decided to pursue opportunities outside the group and will step down from the board effective May 31. We thank her for her outstanding contribution to ICICI and wish her all the very best. Anup would take over Vishaka's responsibilities at the board level. The board has today approved the elevation of Rakesh as an executive director and he would take over Anup's responsibilities. Anandya will take up the role of CFO and will report to Sandeep Patra, who will continue to head our corporate center. At ICICI Bank, we strive to build a sustainable and responsible business and make a positive impact on the economy, society, and environment. The bank has focused on various aspects of ESG in its business as well as CSR activities. We have adopted a board-approved ESG policy along with governance and oversight framework for ESG. Looking ahead, we see many opportunities to grow our core operating profit in a risk-calibrated manner. We will continue to focus on our objective of catering to all the banking and financial needs of the customer with a focus on risk and reward. Our ecosystem-based approach and creation of multifunctional teams has helped in nurturing relationships and offering the entire bouquet of services of the bank to customers. We continue to be guided by the twin principles of one bank, one ROE. 
emphasizing the goal of maximizing our share of target market across all products and services and fair to customer fair to bank emphasizing the need to deliver fair value to customers while creating value for shareholders we remain focused on delivering consistent and predictable returns to our shareholders i now hand the call over to rakesh thank you sir <coughs> i'll talk about the balance sheet growth credit quality pnl details growth in digital offerings portfolio trends and performance of subsidiaries starting with the balance sheet growth sandeep covered the loan growth across various segments up to the last quarter we used to report rural loans as part of the retail portfolio from this quarter we are reporting the rural uh, loans separately the retail loan portfolio excluding the re uh, rural loans grew by 19.7% year on year and 6% sequentially at march 31st coming to the growth across retail products the mortgage portfolio grew by 20.3% year on year and auto loans by 11.3% the commercial vehicles and equipment portfolio declined by 1.3% year on year growth in the personal loan and credit card portfolio was 31.9% year on year this portfolio was 879.35 billion rupees or 10.2% of the overall loan book at march 31st the rural loan portfolio increased by 6.5% year on year and 4.3% sequentially the retail and rural portfolio together grew by 17.6% year on year and 5.8% sequentially the overseas loan portfolio in us dollar terms grew by 5.9% year on year and was flat sequentially at march 31st the year on year increase in the overseas loan portfolio was primarily due to increase in the india linked trade finance book the overseas loan portfolio was 4.8% of the overall loan book at march 31st the non india linked corporate portfolio reduced by 48.2% or about 597 million us dollars year on year and 6.8% or about 47 million us dollars sequentially of the overseas corporate portfolio about 82% comprises indian corporates 10% is overseas corporates with indian linkage 4% comprises companies owned by nris or pios and balance 4% is non india corporates our direct exposure to russia and ukraine is negligible we have exposure to an indian oil refinery uh, rated aa minus externally where a sanctioned russian entity owns 49% stake the exposure is largely non fund in nature the oil refinery's operations are largely in india coming to the funding side average savings account deposits increased by 22.7% year on year in q4 and 23.5% year on year for the full year average current account deposits increased by 23.6% in q4 and 31% year on year for the full year total term deposits grew by 9% year on year at march 31st coming to the credit quality the net deletions from gross npas were 4.89 billion rupees in the current quarter compared to 1.91 billion rupees in the previous quarter there were net additions of 1.23 billion rupees to gross npas in the retail rural and business banking portfolio and net deletion of 6.12 billion rupees to gross npas in the corporate and sme portfolios the gross np additions were 42.04 billion rupees in the current quarter compared to 40.18 billion rupees in the previous quarter the gross np additions from the retail rural and business banking portfolio were 37.36 billion rupees and from the corporate and sme portfolio were 4.68 billion rupees recoveries and upgrades from npa excluding write offs and sale were 46.93 billion rupees in the current quarter compared to 42.09 billion rupees in the previous quarter there were recoveries and upgrades of 36.13 billion rupees from the retail rural and business banking portfolio and 10.80 billion rupees from the corporate and sme portfolio corporate and sme recoveries and upgrades include a power sector account which was upgraded post implementation of a resolution plan under ibc the gross np is written off during the quarter were 26.44 billion rupees the non fund based outstanding to borrowers classified as non performing was 36.4 billion rupees at march 31st compared to 36.38 billion rupees at december 31st the bank holds provisions amounting to 20.51 billion rupees at march 31st against this non fund based outstanding the total fund based outstanding to all standard borrowers under resolution as per various guidelines declined to 82.67 billion rupees or about 1% of the total loan portfolio at march 31st from 96.84 billion rupees at december 31st 
the sequential decline was mainly due to prepayment by a borrower in the construction sector. Of the total fund base outstanding under resolution at March 31st, 60.43 billion rupees was from the retail, rural, and business banking portfolio, and the balance 22.24 billion rupees was from the corporate and SME portfolio. The bank holds provisions of 25.30 billion rupees against these borrowers, which is higher than the requirement as per RBI guidelines. Coming to the PNL, the net interest income increased by 20.8% year on year. 226.05 billion rupees. The net interest margin was at 4% in this quarter compared to 3.96% in the previous quarter and 3.84% in Q4 of last year. The impact of interest on income tax refund on net interest margin was one basis point in Q4 of this year compared to six basis point in the previous quarter and one basis point in Q4 of last year. The domestic mean was at 4.12% this quarter compared to 4.06% in previous quarter and 3.94% in Q4 last year. The cost of deposits was 3.48% in this quarter compared to 3.47% in the previous quarter. Of the total domestic loans, interest rates on 41% loans are linked to repo rate and 7% to other external benchmarks. Non-interest income, excluding treasury income, grew by 11.4% year-on-year to 46.08 billion rupees this quarter. Fee income increased by 14.4% year-on-year to 43.66 billion rupees in this quarter, driven by growth across various segments. Fees from retail, rural, business banking, and SME customers grew by 14.3% year-on-year and contributed about 77% of the total fees in this quarter. Dividend income from subsidiaries and associates was 2.32 billion rupees in this quarter compared to 3.57 billion rupees in Q4 of last year. The dividend income in Q4 of last year included interim dividend from ICICI General and ICICI Securities PD. The bank's uh, operating expenses increased by 17.4% year on year this quarter. The employee expenses increased by 21% year on year. The bank had about 105,800 employees at March 31st. The employee count has increased by about 7,000 in the last 12 months. Employee expenses in this quarter include an impact of 0.69 billion rupees due to fair valuation of ESOPs granted to all employees post April 1, 2021 for the current quarter as required by RBI guidelines. Non-employee expenses increased by 15.6% year on year in this quarter, primarily due to retail business and technology related expenses. The technology expenses were about 8.5% of our operating expenses uh, in FY22. The core operating profit increased by 18.7% year on year to 101.64 billion rupees in this quarter. Excluding dividend income from subsidiaries and associates, the core operating profit grew by 21% year on year. The core operating profit grew by 22.3% year on year to 383.47 billion rupees for the full year. There was a treasury gain of 1.29 billion rupees in Q4 compared to 0.88 billion rupees in Q3 and a loss of 0.25 billion rupees in Q4 of the previous year. The total provisions during the quarter were 10.69 billion rupees or 10.5% of the core operating profit and 0.53% of the average advances. During the quarter, we made contingency provision of 10.25 billion rupees on a prudent basis. The bank continues to carry COVID-19 related provision of 64.25 billion rupees as, as contingency provisions at March 31st. <laughs> Thus, the bank holds contingency provision of 74.5 billion rupees at March 31st. The provision coverage on NPAs continued to be robust at 79.2%. In addition, we hold 25.3 billion rupees of provisions on borrowers under resolution. At March 31st, the total provision, other than specific provisions on fund-based outstanding to borrowers classified as non-performing, were 179.18 billion rupees, or 2.1% of the loans. The profit before tax grew by 63.1% to 92.24 billion rupees in this quarter. The tax expense was 22.05 billion rupees in this quarter, compared to 12.54 billion rupees in the corresponding quarter last year. The profit after tax grew by 59.4% year on year to 70.19 billion rupees in this quarter. The profit after tax grew by 44.1% year on year to 233.39 billion rupees for the full year. The consolidated profit after tax grew by 58% year on year to 77.19 billion rupees in this quarter. 
and the consolidated profit after tax grew by 36.6% year on year to 251.10 billion rupees for the full year. Coming to the growth in digital offerings, leveraging digital and technology across businesses is a key element of our strategy of growing the risk calibrated core operating profit. We have seen significant increase in the adoption of our mobile banking app, iMobile Pay. There have been 6.3 million activations of iMobile Pay by non ICICI bank account holders as of end March. The value of transactions by non ICICI bank account holders in the current quarter was 4.9 times the value of transactions in Q3 of 2022. The value of credit card spends grew by 77% year on year in Q4, driven by higher activation rates through digital onboarding of customers, including Amazon Pay credit cards, automated and effective portfolio management to grow spends among existing card customers, and diversification through commercial cards. The bank has issued more than 3 million Amazon Pay card credit cards since its launch. The bank has recently tied up with Emirates Skywards, the award-winning royalty program of Emirates, and Fly Dubai to launch a range of co-branded credit cards that enable customers to earn reward points on travel, lifestyle, and everyday spends. The value of financial transactions on InstaBiz grew by about 44% year-on-year in the current quarter. The value of transactions on the supply chain platforms in the current quarter was 2.7 times the value of transactions in Q4 last year. The proportion of end-to-end -end digital sanctions and disbursements across various products has been increasingly increasing steadily. About 34% of our mortgage sanctions and 44% of our personal loan disbursements by volume were end-to-end -end digital this year. The bank has created more than 20 industry-specific stacks which provide bespoke and purpose-based digital solutions to corporate clients and their ecosystems. The volume of transactions through these solutions in FI 2022 was 2.7 times the volume of transactions last year. The value of transactions done on trade online increased by about 80% year-on-year this year. Uh, coming to some uh, portfolio information, we have provided the details on our retail, business banking, and SME portfolios in slides 43 to 46 of the investor presentation. Uh, the loan and non-fund based outstanding to performing corporate and SME borrowers rated double B and below was 108.08 billion rupees at March 31st compared to 118.42 billion rupees at December 31st. The amount of 108.08 billion rupees at March 31st includes 23.89 billion rupees of loans under resolution. The sequential decline during the quarter was mainly due to repayment from a borrower in the construction sector where resolution had been implemented as per RBI's COVID resolution framework. The details are given on slide 41 and 42 of the presentation. Other than two accounts, one each in power and telecom sectors, the maximum single borrower outstanding in the double B and below portfolio was less than 6 billion rupees at March 31st. At March 31st, we held provisions of 12.32 billion rupees on the double B and below portfolio compared to 15.75 billion rupees at December 31st. This includes provisions held against borrowers under resolution included in this portfolio. Uh, the builder portfolio, including construction finance, lease rental discounting, term loans, and working capital loans, was 269.48 billion rupees at March 31st, compared to 257.53 billion rupees at December 31st. The builder portfolio is about 3% of our total loan portfolio. Our portfolio is granular in nature, with the larger exposures being to well-established builders, and this is also reflected in the sequential increase in the portfolio. About 9.5% of our builder portfolio at March 31st was either rated double B and below internally, or was classified as non-performing, compared to 11% at December 31st. Uh, coming to the subsidiaries and key associates, the details of the financial performance of subsidiaries <laughs> and key associates are covered in slides 53 to 55 and slides 76 to 81 in the presentation. The VNB margin increased from 25.1% in FI 2021 to 28% in FI 2022. The value of new business increased by 33.4% year on year to 21.63 billion rupees in FI 22. The profit after tax of ICICI Life was 7.54 billion rupees in FI 22 compared to 9.6 billion rupees in FI 21. The embedded value increased by 8.7% year on year to 316.25 billion rupees at March 31st. The profit after tax was 1.85 billion rupees in this quarter compared to 0.64 billion rupees in Q4 of last year. 
Uh, the gross direct premium income of ICSA general was 179.77 billion rupees in FY22, compared to 140.03 billion rupees in FY21. The combined ratio was 108.8% in FY22, compared to 99.8% in FY21. The profit after tax was 12.71 billion rupees in FY22, compared to 14.73 billion rupees last year. Uh, the profit after tax was 3.13 billion rupees this quarter, compared to 3.46 billion rupees in Q4 last year. Uh, prior period numbers are not comparable due to the reflection of the general insurance business of Bharti AXA in the current period numbers. The profit after tax of ICIC AMC was 3.57 billion rupees in this quarter, compared to 3.48 billion rupees in Q4 of last year. The profit after tax of ICIC securities on a consolidated basis increased by 3% year on year to 3.40 billion rupees in this quarter from 3.29 billion rupees in Q4 of last year. ICSA Bank Canada had a profit after tax of 4.3 million Canadian dollars in this quarter compared to 5.1 million Canadian dollars in Q4 last year and 11.5 million Canadian dollars in Q3 this year. Profit after tax was higher in Q4 last year and Q3 this year due to write back of provisions. ICSA Bank Canada repatriated $220 million of equity capital to the bank in Q4 this year. ICSA Bank UK had a profit after tax of 3.1 million US dollars this quarter compared to 2.8 million US dollars in Q4 of last year and 3 million US dollars in Q3 this year. Uh, as per India's, ICSA Home Finance had a profit after tax of 0.53 billion rupees in the current quarter compared to 0.15 billion rupees in Q4 of last year and 0.48 billion rupees in Q3 this year. The year-on-year -year increase in profit after tax is mainly due to decline in cost of funds and lower provisions. So with this, we conclude our opening remarks, and we will now be happy to take your questions. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Maruk Arjania from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, congratulations. Uh, my first question is really on the margin outlook. I, do, I know you don't give any specific guidance, but given uh, intense pricing competition in some segments, you know, unsecured salaries, and then even mortgages, do you think uh, Repo rate hikes uh, will benefit margin? So, Maruk, it will be a function of, uh, you know, so the uh, net interest margin uh, is you know, difficult to give an outlook. I think, uh, you know, in addition to the uh, competitive pricing, you know, that you talked about, uh, like you rightly said, it will also be a function of, uh, you know, the repo rate uh, movement, you know, through the year. And, and the timing of it. So we do have a reasonable part of our book, you know, which is linked to uh, external benchmarks now, like you know, most other banks uh, as well. So, you know, like we always say, you know, our, uh, you know, our, our, our target would be to try and see, uh, you know, how we can, you know, maintain our margins, uh, but it will be a function of, you know, what is happening uh, in the market. If you look at the, uh, you know, current quarter Q4, uh, our uh, margin was about 4%. Uh, if you look at it, you know, uh, uh, in the past years also, Q4 traditionally for us has, you know, seen margins to be about, you know, 8 to 10 basis point, you know, higher, you know, just because, uh, you know, of the fact that the quarter, uh, you know, has lesser number of days, so the annualized, you know, you know, computation gives a slightly higher margin. On the core basis, I would say between Q3 and Q4, uh, the margin was, uh, you, know, you know, kind of uh, flat. And uh, you also saw the fact that the cost of deposits, where, you know, kind of I have now, you know, bottomed out, you know, at 3.47, 3.48%. So we'll have to kind of, uh, you know, navigate through this uh, period, you know, before uh, the repo rate, you know, starts to increase. And then thereafter, definitely, uh, you know, the, the, the existing book yields will go up. 
uh, but the incremental lending rates will still be a function of you know how much liquidity uh, surplus continues in, in the system. Got it. And uh, just in terms of mortgages, so your mortgage book has been doing very well. But if you see the sectoral deployment, sector loan growth is just 8%. Uh, when everyone's talking about a very good real estate cycle and very good registration, so what kind of explains that? If you look at you know uh, if you look at the last uh, you know uh, actually you know several quarters our growth has uh, been uh, you know at similar levels of around 20 percent. Uh, I, I think uh, the the, uh, the focus that we have had on the entire uh, you know retail business in terms of uh, the customer 360 where we are you know looking at the the entire you know set of products and services to be provided has really helped us you know in in, in growing you know both. Uh, the, the the asset book that you are seeing, as well as the strong growth on the liabilities, you know, you know that we have, you know, seen. Uh, of course, in the mortgage market also, you know, the, the lending rates have have declined. There has been a fair degree of, uh, you know, you know, balance transfers also that have been happening. Uh, so those are the reasons, you know, that that we have seen. I'll ask Anup to add if anything is. No, I think that is you have broadly covered it. Uh, I, our focus on micro markets and our focus on. Just making sure that uh, we have decongested many of our processes and make it easier for customer onboarding. And added to that, our micro market and go to market uh, focus is increasing our share. And that actually is leading to this kind of growth. Well, my last question is that uh, RBI has come up with master directions on credit and debit cards. Uh, would your Amazon uh, pay ICICI bank card be fully compliant with those master directions? Yeah, so so Maruk, I think you're glad you asked this question because I'm sure uh, you know subsequently many would have asked this uh, question because it's a very recent development. Uh, as far as we are concerned, we have read through the guidelines. We are looking at it uh, more finely. But uh, at the first reading, uh, we will be quite unimpacted by uh, by these guidelines. These guidelines seems to be, uh, you know, uh, on co-brand, but there are various aspects of co-brand, particularly data sharing and revenue sharing and all of it. Uh, so we will be unaffected largely by by uh, this this circular. Uh, but we are also going through it with Tootcom uh, if there are any issues. But uh, Prime FSE doesn't seem to be have any. In fact, there, of course, there is another bucket on on customers on activation after after one year and uh, if somebody requests for deactivation within seven days we have to reactivate i think those are very very good customer service measures uh, that are coming uh, so so i would put it in two uh, two buckets co brand and customer service related issues uh, we seem to be good on both so far thanks a lot thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of mona kaitan from dolat capital please go ahead yeah, hi, good evening. So, uh, firstly, on the SME and business banking book, uh, what are our incremental yields? And uh, if you could give some color on, uh, in terms of growth, is it uh, led by increased working capital demand due to higher commodity prices or higher inflation? So, uh, you know, we, we don't, uh, you know, separately disclose disclose yields, uh, you know, by, uh, you know, portfolio uh, segments. Uh, but like we were responding to earlier question from Maruk, indeed, uh, you know, the, the, the business banking with any segment is also extremely competitive. And, uh, you know, we continue to focus on, on the entire, you know, you know, customer 360. So it's not just about the loan, but also, you know, the, the float income on the current account side, you know, FX and trade and, and all the other income, you know, that we get, you know, from the customers. Uh, we have been seeing, uh, you know, pretty, uh, you know, strong growth in this portfolio, uh, you know, for for uh, the last, you know, few years. I think it is a, you know, combination of the focus that we have had on this segment, uh, plus of course, you know, all the investments that we have made on on digital and technology uh, in terms of, you know, for for servicing the customers uh, in this segment, uh, which has really helped, you know, with this uh, growth for us. Okay, and. Um uh, I mean, uh, uh, would it be able to be? Would you be able to give some color on whether a large part of this 
uh, incremental growth is also driven by increased inflation in commodity prices, etc. So if you look at it, you know, if you, if you go back say six months, uh, you know, even then the portfolio was, you know, growing at, uh, you know, broadly this kind of a uh, of a pace, uh, you know. So I don't think there is any, uh, you know, specific uh, delta impact of uh, of you know inflation per se. Uh, but of course, you know, in in this segment, uh, you know, most of our loans are you know working capital loans. You know, the the amount of term lending will be uh, you know much more limited. Right, sure. And uh, I'm in, I'm assuming that on the margin front, uh, there is no one-off in terms of income tax refund or anything this quarter. You know, I talked about the you know income tax refund that was like you know one basis point or something. So there is no one-off per se. But like I mentioned in Q4, typically we have the margin which is about you know eight to ten basis points higher. Uh, you know you know than than Q3. You know that's how it comes out. And Q3 was three point. Nine six percent that included about you know six basis point of the income tax uh, uh, you know refund benefit. So if you look at it, I think you know three point nine percent is where we were in Q3 broadly you know around that level uh, in in Q4 on a core basis and full year also we are in that region of you know three point nine three point nine five percent. Just to add, Dr. Uh, on that on the SME portfolio and the BLD portfolio, our ticket sizes largely are uh, are uh, similar. It is enhanced coverage. And decongestion of processes, which is, I would say, put more weighted on on leading to the growth. For, uh, on sure, that. sure, that's helpful. And just finally, on the credit card book, uh, where would our revolve rates be versus safety COVID level? Don't disclose that separately, but yeah, you know, it would be, uh, you know, still be somewhat, you know, lower uh, than where we were, uh, you know, pre uh, pre the COVID. Sure, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suresh Ganapati from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Yeah, so my question are all related to credit cards. Anu, do you explicitly share data with Amazon? That's the first question on the co-branding or any of your co-branded partners. Uh, the second question is that, um, you know, the credit card book is up 10% POQ. So, QQ, have you seen any any change in the revolve rates? Uh, if you can tell us, uh, because obviously the credit card outstanding is up QQ. And finally, you know, there is one school of thought with respect to this new guidelines of credit cards is that the Reserve Bank of India could be a bit more open to give licenses to NBFCs for credit cards, considering that there are severe restrictions imposed on co-branding. Do you subscribe to that view? Thanks, Anuk. As, firstly, as I had mentioned earlier to Maril's question, we have read through the guidelines. There doesn't seem to be any impact on us, Prime FAC. We'll, of okay. course, go through the guidelines more more closely to okay. see if there are any impacts. So that will cover the data and all other aspects that you uh, sort of asked about. I think the other important question that you asked is that now if there are restrictions on co-brand, uh, will NBFCs be allowed to issue their own cards, etc.? Uh, I, I think this seems uh, again, you know, these are all speculative. It seems that uh, uh, it, it points more towards other fintechs uh, rather than an NBFC bank type of uh, tie-ups. Uh, it looks more fintech than other things. So that, from that perspective, I will say that competitive intensity might come down instead of up. Uh, from banks' perspective, there are a lot more guidelines around customer service and being fair to the customer, which I think are very positive. So that is also a positive to us. Uh, will other NBFCs try to get a card? Actually, if you, uh, when we saw, you know, there was an old guideline of RBI where RBI could have given a, a, a permission or approval uh, to issue a card, but you had to have an issuing bank, but you could, and which is not co-branded. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, nobody has launched, but I'm sure many people might be uh, might be open to launching those things. We'll have to see. Uh, but the large players who might be open to launching such a thing, they already had co-branded cards in one way or the other. So let us see how it evolves. Uh, but overall, at this point of time, for our, uh, our uh, co-branded, uh, there doesn't seem to be much impact or in fact any impact uh, from the first reading. Second, on the competitive intensity, I think it is going to be uh, equal to, less than equal to, uh, doesn't seem to be greater than equal to. 
uh, of the larger players coming and issuing or having their own credit card that was always an option uh, but has not fructified it might happen uh, it is good but it's a large market today so you know increased competition etc one see, we have to basically play our own games uh, competitive intensity you know does impact but at the end of it finally you know we love to play our game then only then we win uh, and this one the clarification qoq have you seen increase in revolve rates because your outstanding book is up 10% no, so qoq also yeah. qoq as you know there are revolve rates and there are transaction uh, portion also because q3 was very good for us our spend was very good because we also focus because we are festivals we focus on spend we focus on ads in mm-hmm. these spend etc part of it is that as well okay okay thanks so much anup thank you thank you the next question is from the line of manish othwal from nirmal bang please go ahead yes sir uh, thank you for the opportunity i have only one question on your fi 23 loan uh, growth and uh, outlook uh, so when you see the growth rate in the uh, inflation related demand facing in the economy so uh, we like we you know always say that we don't, we don't have any specific uh, you know loan growth uh, you know target and uh, or outlook I, i think uh, our focus is entirely on growing the risk calibrated core operating profit you know so we will uh, you know grow in line with you know the market opportunities which are there uh, we will look at uh, you know the, the the risk and the return you know parameters to be within you know our uh, uh, you know you know thresholds uh, in terms of the opportunity uh, if you look at you know the the across the portfolio Uh, we have seen uh, you know pretty consistent growth across you know you know retail business banking sme uh, corporate uh, and and you know to the extent we we do calibrate our, our growth you know where we find that the pricing is is uh, you know not in line uh, with what we expect uh, uh, and and the entire focus is to uh, you know not look at just the loan book or the loan growth look at the entire uh, you know operating profit contribution uh, coming from uh, the customer coming from the ecosystem so that is how we will you know continue to evaluate these opportunities you know on on, on a market basis on the loan growth part just to add like okay, see we our market shares in individual micro markets are still not fully saturated and so we have the option today to pick up more profitable growth profitable pools etc and using data analytics and our reach and understanding of micro markets we are uh, we will certainly strive and we are of course in pockets also able to pick up those profit pools and 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 those growth in the market so we focus on growth but we focus we try and focus on profitable growth and more sustainable growth and certainly a risk managed growth thank you sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nitin agarwal from motilal oswal please go ahead Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have three quick questions. First is again uh, around growth. Uh, what sort of growth opportunities are we looking at in the wholesale business? As growth trends over there has been quite modest, and, and especially in context to the trends being reported by a peer bank. And second uh, question is, if you can share some colors on the kind of business bank is garnering from non-ICICI bank customers who have used ICICI as mobile banking services. And third is around the provisioning expenses. If you can share more. Uh, color on it the con- ex of contingent provisioning the provisioning is almost negligible for the quarter so uh, um, some color on this and also the outlook that uh, on the provisions to keep up guidance uh, any any thoughts around that over fy23 yeah on uh, just to you know uh, maybe i'll talk about the provisions uh, you know you know first uh, uh, so as you said you know for uh, as this quarter uh largely you know the the provisions were the contingent uh, uh, you know provisions that we made of 10.25 billion rupees uh, on on the rest of the npa and the restructured book the provisions were you know negligible uh, that reflected uh, you know you know one the, uh, the the net deletion in npa you know that we had during the quarter it also reflected uh, you know the, uh, the 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 prepayment you know of a corporate restructured uh, you know loan that we talked about that would have resulted in you know right back on 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 the provisions that we held for that restructured loan uh, so uh, and we have continued to recover you know well on on both you know the corporate side and of course on the retail side as well you know uh, especially on the retail side the high level of addition that we have seen in the last uh, uh, you know four to five quarters uh, those recoveries have been you know coming in 
so I, I don't think you know we should be extrapolating uh, you know this quarter uh, you know from a you know go forward go forward perspective. I think in the past we have talked about the fact that we would you know always want our uh, uh, you know provisions as a percentage of uh, core operating profit not to exceed you know 25 percent. Uh, that is of course you know through a cycle and it will you know vary up up and down you know depending on the stage of cycle you know where we are. And also the composition of the portfolio. So you know, there's no specific guidance that we can give there in addition to you know what we have already said. On on the uh, 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 wholesale banking, uh, you know, opportunities. I, I think uh, uh, the good thing is that you know we get to look at uh, you know you know pretty much all the deals that are happening in 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 the, in the market. And uh, you know wherever it is, you know, franchise business which is adding to our overall uh, you know you know core operating profit. We are happy to do, do do you know do that business. You know wherever it is, standalone lending opportunities at very fine pricing. You know where the you know only objective could be uh, you know book growth and does not really contribute to the core operating profit. You know we are very happy uh, to stay away from that. And to some extent, you know that is what is reflected in in in, in the loan growth. You know you know for us. And as we have said in the earlier calls, I think the entire corporate banking team is also focused on on the ecosystem uh, you know uh, approach uh, towards business so uh, we don't look at just the loans we look at you know all other products and services for the corporate client uh, we look at all that we can do with the employees of the corporate uh, you know in terms of our retail businesses you know as well as uh, the dealers and vendors you know from an sme perspective and uh, we track you know the the profitability in absolute terms and the roe uh, for the corporate client as well as you know for the entire ecosystem so that is the approach that we have and we'll you know continue you know with that we will be competitive you know wherever required from a franchise purpose uh, that's how we look at you know uh, the, the 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 market and the opportunity is is there you know uh, in terms of you know growth and as long as it comes with, within our risk and return uh, uh, you know parameters we are happy to uh, grow uh, yeah, I missed your third question. Yeah, sure. third, no, third, third question was uh, that what happens to the non ICICI bank customers? So first, I think we should uh, start to really uh, look at it from a, a point of view that who are our customers, and we'll have to start to expand our way of how we think about our customers. Uh, we would think that it is not just deposit customers or asset customers who are our customers. Anybody who is using our services becomes our customer. So if it is iMobile Pay, they may not have deposits with us today, they may not have assets with us today, but if they start using iMobile Pay, they become our customer. Similarly, FastTag, for example. FastTag, there are many FastTag customers, they are all good customers, they are all affluent customers. They may not have deposit customers, deposits with us, uh, but and they may not have assets with us, but they are also our customers. So I would say that non-deposit customers and not uh, non-asset customers, because that Today is one of the largest flows of good quality leads uh, for for banks like us, and our experience with that is very very good because they 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 tie into the brand, they get to see an experience adjunct services that we provide, and uh, more data footprint they leave with us. Uh, better is our ability to pre-approve them. Better is our ability to understand them, and better is our ability to in a sharp focused manner. Give them proposition that will that will give them a reason to start overall 360 banking with ICICI Bank. So our experience is good, and I thought I'll just expand it a little bit to to just share with you what is our general approach to non ICICI the so-called non ICICI bank customers. They are all ICICI bank customers. They are service customers. They are not deposit customers. They are not asset customers. Sure. Thanks a lot, and uh, all the best, Rakesh, for the new role. Thank, Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Bise from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to get a sense on the EFS portfolio. Uh, can you share the duration here? Because uh, we still have a small trading profit this quarter. So we don't you know, share the, uh, the duration separately, but overall, you know, again, our, our approach has really not, you know, never been to take. Uh, uh, you know, you know, high duration. Uh, you know, into the AFS portfolio. Even if we have, you know, some strong view on, you know, interest rates going down, that that view would be taken, you know, in the HTN book per se. The AFS and trading book is, you know, uh, uh, Alpha trading book is very actively, you know, uh, managed and, you know, uh, traded by the prop trading, you know, group. 
if you look at the current quarter on treasury you know i, I don't think on fixed income side uh, you know we would have you know made money or any other bank you know would have given how the yields have moved uh, for us you know it would uh, you know reflect more uh, you know fx and other uh, you, you know revenues sure and uh, secondly i think this one is for anup uh, um, are you seeing pick up in the uh, the spend levels uh, on the credit card or or large part is driven by new acquis- new acquisition spends or are you how are you seeing uh, like the fee item on the on the credit card side how should one read this on a sequential basis No, so we certainly see uh, that the spends are slowly increasing now as you know in credit cards it is you get a customer uh, you get a you, you get get a customer then they activate and then they start spending and then they start revolving and and there are many many facets of of this life cycle uh, and you have fees somewhere and you have interest rate somewhere and and all of it Uh, so we are certainly seeing consumption coming up as covid normalizes and it has normalized quite a bit almost fully so we are seeing now spends coming up and revolve also slowly slowly moving up and that will make the uh, all other downstream things which is revolve and fees and all of it it should start to look healthier any comment on spend behavior for customers who are probably Uh, acquired through last year or or have been with you for years so we are spend behavior as improving and because many of you are interested in in amazon card so i am happy to share that actually yeah, the yeah. the non amazon spends on amazon has been quite healthily growing uh, so that is a very happy thing uh, for 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 us and uh, that was the desired uh, outcome as well from us uh, and we are seeing is that across categories now Uh, spends are are increasing, and it is evident to other part of our and as uh, our MD also shared with you on the ultra high frequency index. Also, if you look at the components of the index, you will see economic activity everywhere. And finally, this economic activity is only reflect in the card spends and on the commercial spends. So, so far so good. Let's see. Ah, uh, great. Thank you, and congrats on a strong quarter. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Dama from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is that uh, we've been focusing a lot on the core profitability growth. Uh, so this year, I mean, this quarter we have clocked somewhere about 19 or percent core profitability growth. Now moving into FY23, where margin expansion will be a challenge. So what could be the levers of you know core profitability growth uh, 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 that you can uh, talk about that that will be great so from a core operating profit perspective uh, you know i i think uh, uh, you know the yield and the cost the margins you know that that you talked about you know that is uh, you know of course a, a prime driver you know in addition to that uh, you know in terms of uh, the 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 fee income you know the the you know business sourcing cost uh, you know and the other expenses so we look at you know all all the levers and we have to manage you know all those levers you know optimally uh, to to get the desired outcome on the core operating profit you are right that this year uh, you know we have seen a uh, you know increase in our margin by you know close to you know 25 to 30 basis point on on a yoy basis which has definitely you know helped us uh, in in the strong core operating profit growth uh, and as i said you know we will have to navigate you know through through this uh, you know you know coming year Uh, especially with the interest rate scenario also changing and we will you know do do the best that we can do in terms of uh, optimizing on all these levers and you know continuing to focus on doing you know granular good quality uh, business uh, you know as we do this so do you think that the fee income actually can improve from year on because uh, and and what could be the levers for for improvement in the fee so the way we look at it is not you know fee income say in aggregate you know so as you know anup also you know earlier mentioned i think it's all about the focus on the you know the micro markets and customers so we we don't you know target an overall you know fee income growth or or something like that uh, what we are focused is you know to look at you know the 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 customer level the ecosystem level the at the micro, micro market you know what we can uh, do and it can be you know it can be 
if you know if if, if margins are higher lower fees is fine you know or if margins are low you know we would need to uh, you know look at more fees so it is something which you know optimally each of the business uh, teams looked at looks at uh, on on what needs to be done from the point of view of you know what works the best uh, and 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 the most fair you know for both the customer and and the bank so in the aggregate uh, you know it is not something that we are focused on and there can always be ups and downs you know in in some of these you know metric uh, going forward as well uh sir so next year and maybe maybe over next two to three years uh, you know there is a pr bank which is going to look at uh, deposit mobilization you know to the extent of about 5 trillion or so uh deposit mob, uh, is a, is a uh, area where there is there is going to be a lot of competition so how do you see basically in terms of your branch expansion uh, customer acquisition and uh, deposit rates going forward so at at any point of time you know it is a competitive market on deposits on lending and we don't see you know that changing over the next uh, you know you know two or three years so i think there is a certain approach that we have in terms of you know uh, our uh, you know liability franchise and and the growth that we look at and then how how we deploy you know those funds so i think we will continue with with our approach again you know in terms of number of branches and all you know you know all of those things you know they are decided by the respective uh, uh you know you know businesses uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, what they are seeing on the ground in their respective micro market and if they believe you know you know addition of uh, branches addition of you know people will uh, you know help them uh, you know grow their deposits uh, and more importantly the core operating profit you know then uh, you know they they are absolutely uh, you, you know happy to go ahead and invest that is how you know we we look at it um and you know if there is more competition i guess we will have to just uh, you know live with that and see you know what what best we can do so you could see an acceleration in the branch expansion finally because of the competitor going crazy so that may not be the only factor as long as you know we are seeing opportunity in the ma- micro market for us to you know uh, uh, to 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 grow uh, you know we will be happy to uh, you know add branches and of course the you know the the type of branches have also evolved a lot you know so there are you know various format branches so branches is not the only thing it's an important thing we will definitely you know look at you know adding branches but it's not you know just as a you know reaction to any any you know you know competitor that we look at it from and so any point of time rbi has asked our house business to be merged in with the bank do it is very small uh, uh, in the overall scheme of things but no not really Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Adarsh Paras Rampuria from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, I think a um, couple of questions. First is um, we are firmly in like a, a benign credit cost um, cycle, uh, including what you see with your results in the last six months. Um, so, do you expect uh, you know as you you know do you think that we are in a um, structurally lower credit cost mix of book and hence over a medium term does uh, the pricing reflect that and uh, both lines both margins and um, uh, credit costs are just lower uh, because we are clearly undershooting what we ever mentioned as a guidance on provisions yeah others i think you know we'll have to You know, you know, see that you know over a you know slightly uh, longer period. Uh, clearly, our our you know focus has been on you know, what we call as return of capital in all our lending, and uh, you know that should result in you know lower credit costs for us. Uh, you know, you know through cycles. Uh, but it is just you know you know too early to kind of uh, you know you know talk about that. Uh, and of course, in the last you know couple of quarters, like you mentioned, we have uh, also had. you know the 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 benefit of uh, you know significant uh, uh, you know deletions upgrades you know from npas uh, you know coming uh, because of the larger additions you know that we have uh, had in the uh, you know earlier periods because of uh, because of the covid uh, but overall portfolio definitely if you look at you know the rating profile on the corporate sme side which we disclose every uh, every quarter you look at the retail uh, you know uh, you know portfolio how the npa additions there have been moving uh, it 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 does give us uh, you know good amount of confidence but you know we we don't want to kind of you know right now 
uh, you know, you know, uh, talk about you know how how low or how, or high these numbers you know could be. Our approach would be always be to see you know how we can uh, you know have it at an optimal level you know from a growth perspective. Got it. And uh, I know one question you did mention uh, when we look at uh, how much the retail products are penetrated within our customer base. Uh, it's still not optimum, and there's a lot of leeway. Any sense and direction you can give us to how you look at it, where you are next three to five years, where you all want to get either some numbers or any sense of quantum or direction? So, so two two things we have certainly uh, strengthened over a period of time. I think over a period of time, last three, four, five years, there is more and more and more digital footprint that the customers have kept with us uh, because of our very strong digital properties. So that helps us also in understanding them better. And also figuring out uh, from from various other public sources uh, and and civil and other places, uh, you know, if they are and of course auto debit on our our uh, uh, liabilities, yeah, they deposit. Uh, where are they uh, banking with? And then we have to give them a very strong reason why they should shift to our bank and bank with us uh, in a more holistic manner. I mean, the onus is certainly on us. That is one. So there there itself saturation is okay, but we can certainly make it better. The second place is at the micro market level itself. Uh, we have a reasonable sense of what is the profit pool in a micro market, uh, given the kind of uh, business that is happening, the, given the kind of economic activities that underpins the mark, micro market, and generally a reasonable idea. I'll not say it is exact, but a reasonable idea of what is our percentage share of that profit pool that is there. There we use. So in both cases, we use very, very extreme and very good quality focus, outcome focus, data analytics. And so we have got a good share there. And uh, there we see that there are many micro markets that are quite underpenetrated. And so it is our endeavor to put uh, the processes, uh, put the proposition, reach out to the customer, and try and crunch the timeline uh, from the opportunity to conversion. That is really the, the big job every day full teams are focused on. So these are the two clear opportunities. One, customers who are with us. Second, customers who are not with us, but in the micro markets. Got it, Jimmy. And Dr. Thanks for your answers. All the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we take that as the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, everyone, for spending the Saturday evening with us. Uh, we'll be happy to take uh, you know any residual questions separately. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Bank, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.